all, I don't see my wife, Gwen. She's here. There she is. Gwen, Gwen and I and the uh, Saanich Gulf Islands Green Party uh, welcome you to uh, this uh, fundraising event uh, on behalf of uh, Elizabeth May and uh, her for sure re-election. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very touched and honored by Kurt's words, and I want to thank Kurt and Gwen for organizing this lovely event. It's uh, extraordinary, and it is, it, is a, it is a strange week. I mean, there's no question. Uh, my father passed on Wednesday morning, and I leave tonight for a family gathering and services tomorrow. But uh, my brother and I talked it over about whether I should rush back, and he said, there's really no point. We're not going to put anything together till Monday. And, you know, our nickname for my dad was Squire. He was known as Squire for years. Um, it, it actually started because we were running a restaurant and gift shop on the Cabot Trail, and my brother, at the point that my brother was about 20, realized it seemed absurd to be running through a public space calling out Daddy. Um, and, and we were big Monty Python fans, and we had a record in which, uh, of, of a Monty Python sketch in which um, some, some rather nasty thugs come into a store. I don't know if you know this particular skit. And they bump in to the turntable and say, Sorry, Squire. I scratched the record. <laughs> and then it goes, Sorry, Squire, I scratched the record. And then it goes, Sorry, Squire. <laughs> so there was one day that my brother was running through the gift shop to try to find my dad, and he just called out, Squire. And my dad knew who he meant. <laughs> so from that point on, my dad was known as Squire. And, and then the bus tour company, since we ran this gift shop and restaurant for tourists, uh, we were in a village of 42 people, but they didn't eat out. Um, so, uh, as a restaurant, we depended entirely on tourists, and they then began to call my dad the Squire of Marguerite. They thought it was an official title. He was always reading them wearing his kilt and speaking Gaelic to them and so on. Anyway, um, my dad was obviously um, much loved and uh, lost to us for quite a while because of dementia. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a bittersweet processing of loss, but knowing it's the right thing. And my brother said, you know, that's where I was before when I started to tell you why. My brother said, Squire would not want you to cancel things if you don't have to. I mean, you can get here when you get here. And so that's why I'm here and, and grateful for the chance to thank you for all your support. And for the next election, I, nothing, I take nothing for granted. I really do hope that I'm re-elected, and I hope I'm re-elected with a whole lot of other Green MPs. And for those of you who were at Art Spring earlier, and you may have heard me mention this before, I think there's every possibility that at the end of the next election, there'll be a minority parliament within which the Green MPs will form a balance of power <laughs> and be able to say to Mr. Trudeau or Mr. Mulcair, because I think, I think Harper will finish third ranking. <laughs> so, no, and, and a lot of, you know, this is based on polls, plus it's based on talking to a lot of conservatives who are disgusted with what they see. They didn't think this is what they would get from a conservative prime minister. The scandals particularly, the lack of accountability. So. Uh, as we look at the next election, I think there's every possibility that we can actually elect enough Green MPs to be able to negotiate with whatever other party appears to be in position to form government, but is in a minority position, work with them and say, look, as soon as you agree to uh, get rid of first past the post and give us a real climate plan, we'll make sure there's no election for four years. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of offer that even people who weren't that keen on getting rid of first past the post and having a real climate plan could begin to agree. Petra Kelly, who founded the Green Party in Germany, which essentially means she founded the Green Party for the world, used to describe the Greens as the anti-party party. So I've always been very much at home with Greens because we are not in it to build some empire for personal power. We're not interested in building a party for its own sake or winning seats at the expense of the climate or the country or our principles. We're only about changing the system so we can 
rescue our children's future from the clutches of the fossil fuel lobby, which right now seems to be holding our children for ransom uh, without being willing to name the price. So we have a chance, and it's a really good chance, to change the future of not just Canada's political trajectory to being responsible government, to standing for the things Canada should stand for. We have a chance to actually drive the negotiations for the future climate treaty, which happens to be taking place. The deadline negotiations will be after we've had our federal election. So that's what I'm focused on. A number of Greens elected, and when the names of the other Greens running across Vancouver Island become known to you, when you hear about some of the Greens running in other parts of the country, you realize that actually this is a real prospect that we will form balance of power. But without me getting elected here, it would be rather rough. So, <laughs> so I'm very grateful for you all being here, and I'm very grateful for your support on uh, tonight of all nights. And and that's all. I'm really grateful to you for having us and me and everybody here. <laughs> Perfect segue, <laughs> talking about money. <laughs> I don't know how many of you know that under the current conservative government, the amount of money that comes to political parties has greatly diminished. I don't know, it may have even gone down. It goes to, to zero next year. Ne there you go. Next year, the government is not directly participating except through one way and one way only. And that is, as you make a contribution, you get a receipt, and that receipt becomes a credit on your Canadian federal tax return. Mm -hmm. And through that way, the amount that you give tonight, yesterday, and tomorrow to help Elizabeth May get elected the federal government is participating by reducing your income tax burden. For doing such a great job, yes. and I want to thank everybody here for giving a donation. It is really wonderful. It's lovely to work for this lady. I adore her. I think most of us do. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Again, um, and, and I appreciate Kurt's um, efforts to make sure you give more than you plan to. It's it's a it's a, it's a noble thought, but I do want to say, no matter what, it's such an honor to work for you. This is the most amazing community. And when I stand up in the House of Commons, if anything smart comes out of my mouth, it's because I've had an awful lot of input from everybody here at every town hall meeting, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.